Hello, I'm Jennifer Witt, Director of ProjectManager.com. Well, welcome to our whiteboard session today on how not to manage your project. Well, that's a little tricky, right? That can be, de that can be uh, deduced several different ways. So it sounds like a double negative. So what are we really saying? So if we provide information on how to manage your project, say in a good way, we're saying these are things not to do. So I want to provide the top 10 how not to's on your project and look at some excuses and ultimately look at the end result. So if some of these phrases sound familiar to maybe some of the things you might be doing or even some of your colleagues, these are some of the things not to do. Number one, wing it. In essence, there's no planning. You don't take the time to plan. So what is the excuse for that? So we might often hear, well, I just don't have enough time. There's no time to do the planning. We've just got to get it done. The second one is false starts, starting before the project actually starts. So in essence, there's no approval. There's no really defined scope or agreed upon scope. And so you just get the team going. So what's the excuse for that? Well, we, we just got to get things done. We might not have enough time and we've just got to get going. Number three, agree to favors by maybe some of the clients or stakeholders or some of your friends or favorites. By taking favors from them, you're actually adding additional scope. So what's the excuse for that? Well, we've got plenty of time. While we have this open or while we're doing that, we'll just go ahead and incorporate this in too. There'll be enough time. Number four, ignore input. In essence, you're discounting collaboration where people can give you additional feedback or input that may change the result of something. You just discount it. So what's the excuse for that? I know, or this is good, just good enough. We'll go with what we have. Number five, padding estimates. In essence, what's happening here is you're jeopardizing the timeline or budget. And what's the excuse? Well, this, this gives us leeway just in case. Number six, representing status. Well, the result of that, it really builds mistrust, but what's the excuse? I think we'll be okay. I don't think people uh, sometimes mean to build mistrust or mean to misrepresent, but by just saying, I think we'll be okay, maybe not checking, maybe not getting the right information or accurate or going to the extra steps to get the detailed accurate status, again, you, by thinking everything is okay, you're actually building mistrust. Number seven, overprotecting your team. In essence, customer dissatisfaction because you're discounting what a customer might, may be saying. So what's the excuse for that? Well, they just don't know. The customer just doesn't have all of the facts. Or on the flip side, never supporting your team. Well, that leads to a dysfunctional team and the excuse is the customer is always right. Well, no, my friend, the customer is not always right. The customer may have a viewpoint, they may have additional requests, they may have additional information, but the customer is not always right. We want to incorporate their input into the project and evaluate and assess and go to the proper steps for the customer's company, our client, our customer, go through the process to get it approved. So. The next one is the, um, the bottleneck. You become the bottleneck or missed milestones. And the excuse is, well, I need, I need to make sure everything's okay. So if you need to make sure everything's okay, everyone has to come for you to get your okay, your approval, or have your hands in everything, you can't help but become the bottleneck. Number 10, omit testing or user acceptance. In essence, what happens is going to result in poor quality. And the excuse is, we can borrow time here because we need it in the earlier phases. So what happens here is the result is you end up with a failed project in your name on the Hall of Shame. If you need a tool so you can manage your project effectively and you don't end up on the statistics of failed project and worse yet, the Hall of Shame, then sign up for our software now at projectmanager.com.